creating impact and scaling impact and providing value. Uh, that is 100% what's most important. And by communicating and building relationships intentionally, you're gonna be able to do that to a higher degree. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. I am your host, Tyler Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Wow. It just feels good to do that every now and then, I'm not gonna lie. Welcome to the Sales Wolves Podcast. This is episode 66, and today we are going to be talking about something that is near and dear to my heart right now, and that is intentional relationships. Intentional relationships. Building relationships intentionally or with intentionality. Uh, I've got a few points, a few notes that I wanna go through when it comes to this, but let me just set it up this way which is, I hate networking. I hate it. Um, to go to a networking event, I've said this before, I'll say it again, is my definition of hell. Um, to stick me in a room with a bunch of people with suits on uh, that are just wanting to have small talk. Hey, what do you do? Hey, what do you do? Hey, what do you do? Hey, where are you from? Hey, da, 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 da. it's just, it's terrible. It's, it's just, for me, I can't stand it. I'll go sneak underneath the, the um, table, uh, what do you call it, tablecloth and just like get on my phone and then appear three hours later and leave. Uh, but it's because nobody is intentionally trying to build relationships. It's just fake, very shallow uh, conversations that don't amount to anything. And it's all about what can you do for me? What can I get from you? What can I get from you? And it's just not the way life works. And so I think if we restructure the way we network, if we restructure the way we build relationships, if we restructure the way we connect with individuals, then these networking events can actually become a wealth of uh, opportunity for you. And I think this gets back to the very basis of what I'm building throughout all of this social media, which is creating impact and scaling impact and providing value. Um, that is 100% what's most important. And by communicating and building relationships intentionally, you're going to be able to do that to a higher degree. And so what does that actually look like? If any of you saw uh, the Daily Bread episode, which is my daily vlog, if you saw the Daily Bread episode, uh, I believe it was episode 87 with Ted? 88. 88. Um, we talked about, the, the premise was on this idea, but it was just a episode of a discussion, a conversation that I had with a guy that I met for the very first time. Uh, this guy, Ted Phaeton, incredible guy here in Greenville. Um, he's the head anchor at Fox News. He had sent me a DM on Instagram, and it just said, hey man, love the stuff you're doing, would love to connect sometime. So I said, yeah, I would love to, let's, let's meet up. And we literally had to schedule this out like three or four weeks in advance because we're both busy and traveling and all that. Um, but I said, yeah, let's come in on a Friday and let's have you come into the office and, and we'll chat. When he walked into the office from the moment that I shook his hand for the very first time, very first time we'd ever spoken, not in that one DM on Instagram, it was the very first time we'd met in person, there was no shallow, just small talk. It was not like, hey, how's it going? Weather, weather's crazy these days. Oh yeah, the pollen count's super high in Greenville. Yeah, I've been sneezing all day. And hey, how about that you know, Cavaliers game last night? There was none of that. We sat down and we went deep. And by going deep, I mean we went into the conversations on topics that actually matter. What's important to you? What's your focus right now? Where are you trying to get to? Where are you headed to? And because of that, it turned into a three and a half hour long conversation, which is crazy. But at the very least, it we came out of it with both having a greater understanding of what the other person was trying to, doing, uh, trying to do, and we both had a greater understanding of how we could help one another in doing that, and we built a great relationship 
in that one encounter that would normally take a year to develop. So how does that happen? It happens by being intentional with the relationships that you're building. So I'm gonna go through a couple, a couple key notes that I put down here. There's a guy named Rob, R-I-C-I-G-L-I-A-N-O. Rob Ricigliano, maybe. He's got this systems and complexity, he's a systems and complexity coach for Omidar Group and a long term a long-time negotiation and mediation expert. So he introduced this idea of this. Uh, guiding star and near star. Uh, a lot of you may have heard Gary V, or I've talked about it as well. This idea of like, what's your north star? Uh, of, you know, your your end lifetime goal. Like Gary V is to buy the New York Jets. Uh, for me, I'm still trying to figure out what that is, uh, quite frankly, and I'm still in that process. Um, but for Gary, it's it's very easy. It's buy the New York Jets, and he bases every small daily decision. And in the context of this conversation here, every relationship, every conversation on is this putting me closer to my North Star or is it taking me away from my North Star? Or is it neutral? And guess what? If it's neutral, it's taking you away. There is no neutral. You're either moving forward or you're moving back. So that's the North Star. But this concept of guiding star and near star is super important as you're trying to build relationships intentionally. So a guiding star, the guiding star should be framed as the shared desired future your initiative is working toward. It is not time bound and will serve as a navigational tool as your initiative moves forward and adapts over time. So it's very similar to the North Star, but it is just this desired future from your initiative. Like what is your desired future goal? Where are you trying to head towards? What are you working towards? What is ultimately what you want to have happen in your life? What is that? That's the guided star, the guiding star. Now the near star is framed as a distant but foreseeable outcome that could be attained in the next few years. It should be a significant step towards the guiding star. So we've got guiding star, near star, guiding star, near star. Let me take the context of that conversation with Ted. In that conversation, we talked about, man, we need to create a movement here in Greenville, South Carolina, where we have like-minded people, people that, that consume content from Gary Vaynerchuk, people that consume uh, content from Andy Frisella and Simon Sinek and all these different people that are putting incredible information out there, people that are reading self-development books, people that are interested in entrepreneurship or are entrepreneurs, people that are constantly just trying to level up. We need to get these people together. We need to create a movement movement, that being the guiding star, we need to create a movement of those people together and imagine the possibilities when we put all those people in one place. That was the guiding star. The near star was us saying, hey, first step, let's create a scenario where we get five or six men in a room sitting around a table and we talk about what it means to be a modern man. Now, why did I say to be a modern man? Well, that's because Ted has a desire to create a, uh, a concept around this modern man, whether that has to do with fashion, whether it has to do with self-development, whether it has to do with business, but this idea of modern man. So in that conversation that came up, and so I said, let's create this scenario around being a modern man. What is it like to be a man in 2018? Let's put them five or six people in a room and let's just have a conversation, set up a couple camera angles and it'll make great content from a native, just organic conversation. Then we said, let's put a date on it. And so right now we are creating a date for the first one that will be in the next month that we're going to have. So again, very near star but that will become a regular reoccurring thing that we do monthly, possibly even bi-weekly, that will bring in different guests and they will start the process of creating a larger group of people that will be creating a movement, which is the guiding star. So do you understand that, what I just, what I just outlined? The guiding star was the movement, the huge group of people, all like-minded, all headed towards one goal. The near star being, let's start with the first five or six people, getting them together, sitting down at a table, having a conversation. So if you start 
framing all of your uh, conversations with people in that way, what is my guiding star? What am I ultimately trying to accomplish? More importantly, what is that person's guiding star? What are they trying to accomplish? And then together forming the near star. Jonathan Parker, who we had in here uh, a few weeks ago, he said it just super way more eloquently than, than me, but he said it so beautifully. He said that when two people get together and they have a conversation, it's like they are in a room with just blank walls, like a blank canvas. And when they get together and they have a conversation, it's like they're creating art together. They're creating a, a piece of art. When those two people leave that conversation, that art is now hung on that wall inside that blank canvas that they have created together, that they can recall when they think of that person. Okay, so I'm thinking about Ted, I'm thinking about the conversation that we had about his dad, who was from Haiti, and about how he's 75 years old, and he wants to make sure that his dad gets back to Haiti um, before he gets any older so that he can see where he came from and where he is now and that evolution and what's happened with his son and what his son, 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 son will be able to pass that torch and have happen. That is a painting on the wall inside that relationship that we have now built, right? So this idea of just being able to create with someone, not just having the stupid, just silly, short conversations that people are having together. So here's a couple of different points that I want to go through as it pertains to networking, but as it pertains to ultimately during that networking process, actually trying to seek out and build intentional relationships. The first we talk about a lot, it's self-awareness. It's knowing yourself. There is nothing selfish or narcissistic at all about trying to become self-aware. But you need to understand yourself before you can ever try to conversate with others to provide them value. You need to understand you first. You need to understand your, your strengths, your weaknesses, your beliefs, your passions, your, just your preferences. Uh, the fact is knowing yourself is a key component to creating success and building a connection. It breeds authenticity, enthusiasm, discernment, which will then help others see and get the real you more quickly and more effectively. That last part is super important. You need to understand who you really are and you need to be that person who you really are when you meet other people so that they can get you. I can't tell you how many conversations I've had over the years, especially over this transformation that I've been going through over the last three and a half years, where the conversation, it was so small talky and shallow and nothing deep to where I left that conversation and they don't get me. They think I'm crazy because I didn't wear it on my sleeve. I didn't come out and in the very beginning of the conversation, let them know what is my guiding star? What is my near star? What are the things I'm passionate about? What are the things that, I'm, that are important to me in my life and my family? And so because of that, all they saw was this surface level stuff of, man, this guy's got three different podcasts. He's got a vlog. He's got you know, all these different platforms that he's posting on. He's doing all this stuff. Like I just, I just don't get it. But when you have a conversation with another individual based on the why behind all that stuff, then they get it. And then they respect it. And then they can contribute to it. Perfect example, I was at a wedding reception a couple of Fridays ago. And I think I may have mentioned this before, but not on this podcast. Uh, but I've been so heads down and working. I, I work a lot. I travel three to four nights a week. I'm, I'm constantly on the road. And when I'm home, I try to spend time as much possible time I can with my family. And that comes at the cost or at the expense of not spending time with friends. I've got an incredible group of friends uh, here in Greenville where I'm from. And a couple Fridays ago, I was at a wedding reception and saw these friends and it was the first time I had seen them since December 1st. And this was in April. That's not good, but it is what it is. The conversation that I had with one of those individuals, a great friend of mine, he just asked me, he's like, dude, what is all the stuff you're doing? Like, I gotta be honest with you, I don't really get it. 
or didn't get it at first, like explain to me. I had like a 30 minute conversation with the guy explaining my exact why behind it. Like, man, all I'm trying to do is what happened to me over the last three and a half years, I wanna have, have happened to other people and I wanna find people that are in that struggle that I was in three and a half years ago and be able to pay it forward for the blessings that I've received. And man, I don't sell anything, I don't monetize anything. All this stuff I'm doing is on top of my career where I do make my income and it's purely just to put value out there and try to make an impact. And as I unpacked that for him and, and explained it, he was just like, holy crap, like, that's awesome. Like, I get it now. He didn't get it before because we'd never had the conversation about what really mattered. All we had had was conversations of, hey, what's up, man? Hey, how are you? Cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. But when we got into what was really important and what really matters, then he got it. And once he got it, he respected it. And then once he respected it, then he can contribute in however ways he wants to contribute. But that's the difference maker. Number two, know what you want. If you're vague, ambivalent, scattered, or unsure, your vision, intention, and goals, then you are likely to be just drifting along, just kind of going with the flow, the status quo, and possibly even becoming invisible to others when you don't know what you want. Clarity and focus go a long way to helping you become more memorable, which in turn means others are clearer and more focused on the ways to help you. So you got to know what you want. This is that Again, back to that guiding star and that near star. So it's first, understanding yourself, and then second, understanding what in the world you want, what you need, how people can help you. Number three, focus on quality, not quantity. This seems like a simple step in the process, step three, but it's probably the most important. The majority of people would tell you that when it comes to networking, especially if you're in sales, and this is a sales-based podcast, if you're in sales, it's all about the numbers, the numbers, the numbers, the numbers. How many people can you go meet? How many introductions can you make? How many business cards can you hand out? All that stuff means absolutely nothing. Rather, adding more new people to your network, rather than adding more people to your new network, invest time in identifying the most valuable connections. Take that a step further, start identifying the most valuable places or events or um, uh, areas where you can meet those types of people. So identifying the people that are most important and then identifying the places where you're meeting important people. Important is very subjective. I don't mean important by like their status or their level. I mean important by someone that you can connect with because they're like-minded and their guiding star and their near star may actually fall within some realm of yours. Once you realize that, you can start making a list of these things and start using your time wisely. But it's about the quality of the relationships not the quantity of the relationships. And that all goes back to being intentional. Sitting down with Ted for three and a half hours, that's not duplicatable. I can't get a lot of quantity in the relationships that I can build in a week or in a month or in a year by having a three and a half hour conversation with an individual. But you know what? The quality of the relationship that I will build by having that in depth of conversation is unmatched and you can never duplicate the level of connectedness, the level of shared interests, shared values, and shared purpose moving forward out of that, then that one meeting is worth 50 other meetings that are meaningless, 50 other shallow, short, you know, um, just quick conversations that don't amount to anything. Who cares how many people you pass your business out, business card out to when it just goes in to a drawer in their office and they never look at it ever again? So quantity over quality. Now going into number four, being able to say no, but being able to say no with grace. Once you've identified what quality is for you in the people that you're trying to meet and the places that you're trying to meet them, then you can easily say no to the opportunities that come along to meet other people or to go to other events when it doesn't fall in line with the specific criteria of what made the quality of the events that you identified or the people that you identified. So if I know that there's this one event, let's just call it um, the Greenville Hustle, all right? 
if I know that every time I go to this Greenville Hustle event, I end up meeting two or three people that just become super close because we're so like-minded and we're just on the same path. There's 30 other events I could go to, but I can base my decision-making off of the criteria of that event where I'm meeting great people. Okay, that event, it's set up like this, that has these types of people, it's this type of atmosphere, you have to pay, you don't have to pay, there's drinks, there's not drinks, there's a meal, there's not a meal. That way, when another opportunity comes up, which it will, I can look at it and say, hmm, I wonder if this is gonna be like that Greenville Hustle event, because if it's like that Greenville Hustle event, eh, I'll go, because I'll get some quality uh, relationships out of it. If it's not, I have no time for it, but you can say no gracefully because it doesn't fit in within your criteria. It's a huge, huge, huge important point there because you can spend so much time going to absolutely everything and get nothing from it. So identify the ones that are actually important, uh, then be able to say no to the ones that aren't. Fifth point, focus on your best connections. So once you make a connection with someone, once you do have a conversation that is intentional and you start building a intentional relationship with another human being, follow up, send a text every couple of days, have a phone call. Did you guys know that you can actually take your phone? Sorry, it's using it for Facebook Live right now. I can't pull it out of my pocket, but you know, you can actually take your phone and you can click on someone's name and it will ring and they will answer it on the other line and you can say, Hey, what's up? Not much, man. What's up with you? Hey, I was thinking about that conversation that we had last Friday. You know, we were talking about this, the near star. Let's go ahead and get that date on the calendar. Let's move this thing forward. Now, I know that may be foreign to a lot of you, especially the younger de demographic that watches this podcast or listens to this podcast, that it's not just a two-way texting device, that you can actually have conversations that are meaningful, but it could be a text, a DM. Hey, man, I was just thinking about you today. I know that you had uh, that, that thing going on. I just want to make sure that you knew that, uh, that I was thinking about you. I hope you crush it. Uh, it doesn't have to be like, kind of like, that was kind of like weird just thinking about you. That may sound weird. But like, just, hey man, know you had that big event today. Hope you crush it. Like, that means the world to someone. That would mean the world to me if somebody sent me that message that I just met recently at an event. Um, so, so follow up. Stay in contact and focus on those best connections uh, that you find. Because it's, a, again, a bad use of time to make an incredible first connection, to, be, to create incredible first conversation and then just to let that fade away. So keep in contact. That's the, that's the main reason why you have to focus on quality, not quantity, because it's not feasible, it's not realistic to be able to follow up with 100 people in a month. But if you have five or six really meaningful conversations with people that you can develop a real intentional relationship with, you can keep up with that. And the return that you will have on those five or six will be far greater than the shallow relationships that you have with a hundred. Next point, stand out in a crowd. You never know when or where an important conversation can take place. So stand out in a crowd starts by showing up. And when you show up being available, there's a big difference between being present and being available. There's a big difference between checking a box off that I went to this networking event on Thursday and actually being available at that event to have those conversations. How in the world are you gonna know if there's someone there that's worth building an intentional relationship with if you're not available for them to even come up and talk to you or for you to go up and talk to them? You have to make yourself available by standing out in the crowd. So be ready, be alert, be aware of your surroundings. Live your brand and allow it to guide you or to guide how you show up and conduct yourself. Show genuine interest in other people by being the first to say hello, offering a professional handshake, an engaging conversation. Ask questions that show interest. It's one of the key things there. Ask them questions. And not questions like, what did you think about the freaking LeBron James performance last night? Not asking questions like, you know, why has it been raining for the last three days? Like stupid stuff about weather and stuff that doesn't matter, that's not important. Asking deep questions like, hey man, what's your biggest focus right now with your business? That opens up 
the opportunity for them to tell you whatever in the world they want to tell you. And by that answer alone, you'll be able to quickly realize if this is something that you want to spend more time with or if it's something that you need to move away from and try to find someone else that you can be more intentional with. Asking questions like, hey man, um, uh, you know, find out about their family. Family's a huge key area to get intentional with a relationship. If you can find out about someone's family and they'll open up to you about their family, then they're probably gonna be able to open up to you about a whole lot of other stuff that you can provide value. The, I think, last and, and most important is to give first. This is almost all that I talk about. But providing value going into that conversation, going into that relationship with zero expectation of anything in return from them, but going in with 100% intention of providing something for them. An intentional relationship has nothing to do with what you can get and has everything to do with what you can give. And when you go into a conversation, when you go into a relationship with that mentality, how can I help someone in this room today? It doesn't have to be help like, hey man, you need 20 bucks? <laughs> or help like, hey man, uh, oh, you're moving this weekend? You need a hand? Like, I'm not talking about that help. I'm talking about how can you connect them with someone that they need to be connected with to make an introduction that will then in turn help them with their business, help them meet that next person that could be a potential client for them. You can help them by your insight based on the context of your life on some of the struggles that they're going through. Guess what? The only way you're gonna have a conversation with someone about their struggles, if you have been extremely intentional and deep with the questions that you're asking them to be able to even get that stuff to come up in conversation. Think about it. When's the last time that you had a conversation with someone where they opened up and told you about something that they are really struggling with? My opinion would be that if they are willing to do that, you are doing an incredible job at communicating intentionally with other people. If it's never happening, then you're not doing a great job. And these are some things that you can adopt that can help you get there. But if people are opening up to you and telling you their struggles, if they're being honest and transparent with you, that means absolutely everything that you are doing is 100% aligned with creating an intentional relationship, but always provide value first. Make it a rule that you refuse to receive. I'm trying to think of, there was a, oh, an episode of The Office one time um, when it was, uh, let's see who it was, it was like Andy and I think like Dwight and one of them did something for the other and the other tried to reciprocate. They're like, oh, let me get the door for you. Like, let me get the door for you. And oh, let me grab your coffee. No, let me grab your coffee. And then it was like back and forth, back and forth. And they were like, I will not stop until I'm the last one that provided the value. You need to be that intentional almost to a fault where you can't receive. Like I can't, I can't take any Anything from you. I can't get anything from you. I don't want anything from you until I've given you something. And it doesn't have to be something big. It could be just your time, your ear, the ability for you to listen. But always strive to provide value first. Value, 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 value. And not expect anything in return because you know what? They may not do anything that provides value to you. And that's completely fine. And you have to be okay with that because that's called being a good person. It's called being a good person and doing the right thing. And when you do the right thing, just because it's the right thing, good things are gonna happen. So guys, I'll run through these really quick again. We started with this guiding star, that huge long-term goal that you're headed towards, the main thing that you wanna have happen. Then you've got the near star, which is the distant but foreseeable future next steps. Then you've got to know yourself. You've got to know what you want. You've got to focus on quality, not quantity. Once you do that, you can say no with grace. Then you can focus on your best connections and make sure that you're following up and building those relationships. You got to stand out in a crowd and be available, not just present. And always, 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 always provide value first. Provide value first. 
Guys, if you start implementing some of these ideas with your relationships, with your networking, then it will quickly flip in your mind from I'm going to this networking event to see who I can meet, who I can connect, who can connect me with the next person that will end in a sale. It makes these relationships not transactional and it makes these relationships intentional, but meaningful. And that's not gonna only improve your business, it's gonna improve your quality of life. So I hope you enjoyed this conversation today on intentional relationships. This was episode 66 of the Sales Wolves podcast. I am your host, Tyler Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ow!